So I thought I saw a hand from Steve. So Steve, I don't know if you have any questions. I, I do. <clears throat> and, uh, um, apologize, I didn't bring it up at the time. Um, back to the NRD discussion. Um, curious, and, and I'm a little rusty on my memory on on where everything stood. But at one time, there was we had some stakeholder meetings, and there was a a, a process or a, a desire in place by the department to come out with a policy on. Um, NRD with respect to groundwater releases. Um, curious uh, the status of that and uh, any other information regarding it. So I don't know if Michelle still, I know she had another meeting to go to, but I can tell you I, that. Um, I just hopped back on, Melly, so if oh, I great. can follow up after you if you want to start. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I just, you know, you're here. I just wanted to point to the fact that um, the Executive Office of Energy and Environment has taken a greater role when it comes to um, NRD program. And there are some NRD regulations that are navigating. And I'm wondering if that NRD policy affecting groundwater is part of that regulatory package. So I'll have you respond to that question. Thanks. Um, yeah, like um, obviously, I, I think the NRD or the proposed um, NRD standard method regulations have We've been talking about them for a very long time um, since before I was in this position. Um, and like Millie said, um, we do have some you know, regulations that we're discussing um, with EEA um, as the, the Secretary Tepper, Secretary of EEA is the Natural Resource Trustee. Um, they would be actually issuing their regulations um, on behalf of DEP. I would say, um, Probably when we had some public meetings, I think it was back in 2018, we were discussing a, a surface water method as well as a groundwater method. Um, at this point in time, I, our focus um, is really on the surface water method um, and getting that into regulation. Um, they, um, the um, groundwater standard method, something we're thinking about, um, but the surface water methods really are um, priority at the moment. So ho hopefully that's helpful. I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah, I, I think as a follow up, um, I would just ask that given given the time that's elapsed since those programs were rolled out and stuff, it seems like um, if there is imminent um, regulations coming out regarding that, there, there probably should be like a stakeholder um, update meeting or another round of just um, making the uh, stakeholders aware of, of where the department's going on and where they landed on some of the issues that were raised at that time. Yeah, yeah I, I think that seems very, very reasonable. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you. I agree. And I think, um, again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, um, the thrust of these regulations always looks for, I think, the spirit of the regulations that are the draft regulations. They look for a methodology to quickly or more timely assess potential injury and thereby damages in trying to resolve um, that particular piece. So that's, um, you know, an important um, angle that we're trying to promote um, to more timely cleanups and therefore um, limit, you know, endless NRD damage uh, down the road. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just add, I mean, I think for the NRD regulations, the surface water regulations, at least to work, um, we'll need people to be very aware of them um, and what's going on. So I, I certainly think there would be a fair amount of outreach in the future. And I'll also add that in terms of, I know you asked about groundwater and I'm clearly talking about surface water, but um, we have been kind of piloting the surface water methodology when it makes sense. Um, kind of over time, the um, settlement with Rumney Marsh and Gogan Transportation that I uh, mentioned earlier, um, we did use the standard methodology to reach that settlement. So we, we've had success with it, um, but hoping to obviously roll it out in a bigger scale in the future. So we will certainly um, keep everyone posted when we have um, more definitive information on timing and what it's going to um, encompass. So Steve, we'll take your comment to advisement and, and definitely get back to you with an answer. Thank you for offering that. Yeah, thank you very much.
any additional questions, um, comments, feedback, really want to make sure we capture everybody. Any ideas for future advisory committee meetings, topics? And I see Lauren Konetsky. Konetsky. Hi, um, it's not a PFAS related question. It's um, to do with uh, the short forms and the newest version of the short form has um, only includes the residential, I believe, not the office worker. And I was just wondering when is that supposed to uh, be posted and what are we supposed to do in the meantime? Yeah, I don't know when exactly those are supposed to be done. I know that ORS has those in the works right now. Um, um, maybe, Paul, do you have any insight on, on how to handle this without those forms right now? Can we use the old forms, I guess? Is, yeah, is I would I would say yes. But if Paul okay. has anything else to, to add to that, I, I would. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the options, <laughs> the options are do it yourself. Uh, which would mean that, um, you know, when it came to DEP, if they were going to look at it, say, as part of an audit, then, you know, we would look at the details of what you did. Uh, given that, uh, it's probably a good starting point would be to use the old version. Uh, but certainly one thing you would want to check there is uh, the toxicity values that might be used because the, the, that old version of the spreadsheets will look at an old version of the toxicity values as well. It comes as a package. So as long as you kind of check those obvious things, I, I think there may be a few tweaks um, in some of the exposure assumptions that you know might be in the new version, but it's probably not dramatic. Um, okay. but, but I think also ORS has indicated that uh, you know, they've been hearing that there's the demand for it and they're trying to kind of finalize those spreadsheets and get them up as soon as possible. Yeah, they're aware. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Lauren, I appreciate you bringing this up and I'll definitely raise it uh, as one of the, maybe we can at least take care of this as we're contemplating other larger picture issues. So I appreciate your letting us know about it. Anything else? Questions, comments, concerns, issues. Okay, so um, office hours. Our next one will be on June twentieth. I believe those are at nine o'clock, and um, I'm just suggesting that maybe we um, start sharing PFAS Q and A's. Um, on a rolling basis. And then what we can do is um, at least specific to PFAS, um, we'll certainly keep you posted with um, anything between now and then, um, but then specific to PFAS, um, the Q&A segment should be rolled out and um, any new discussions. We are gonna have actually the coordination meeting um, right before the 20th. So I believe I'll be able to provide you with an update on that. Um, Likewise, bring back any knowledge from the Department of Public Health on um, on their surface water work. I will ex you know explore and ask about the sediment and also um, the beach report. I know that's always long awaited right before Memorial Day weekend. So we'll make sure that we hit on those topics and then um, wrap all those um, office hour hours discussions in the upcoming Wayside Cleanup Advisory Committee meeting. And hopefully by then we will have a little bit more robust um, opportunity for presenting things to you, including as we discussed um, the uh, soils policy and um, just I'll be working with Ken Mara who's running point on that um, to find the correct venue um, for rolling out a draft policy for comments and discussions. Um, my meeting takeaway is it's always wonderful when we get to connect. Um, obviously, virtual is available to us, but maybe at some point in the future, um, if anyone is interested in Klein, we could do this as a hybrid also. We test drove that idea while I was working, um, serving on the LSP board. 
and um, that was always something that was popular. So if you are interested in a hybrid meeting, um, please let me know. I would love to make sure that I and others make ourselves available um, for more contact, um, including physical contact, so we can all kind of be in the same room for those interested. Um, I'd like to ask the advisory committee members if you have any meeting takeaways, impressions, um, how we can make this better. And um, then we'll sign off and then see you the next time around at office hours and the advisory committee meeting coming up. So any last words from advisory committee members or the public in general, we thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Millie. Thanks, Millie. And others. Thanks, Millie. Thanks, Millie. Those are great meeting. updates. Thanks. Very helpful. Well, thank you. Um, I wish I could say go out there and enjoy the sunny day, but it's raining where I am. So um, hopefully tomorrow the sun will shine. And thank you again for all. We look forward to working with you. These are very important times, and we really need to band together to ensure that we can apply the best science and knowledge and um, perspective and experiences so we can bring together, um, you know, the best quality team to work. Thanks again. I look forward to working with you in the future. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye, all.